Now, really simply, there's a couple things you can do right, like right off the bat. Um, one of the best things is when you have a corrective action to do, or even a breakdown, um, you pull up the asset screen history, whichever part of the system it, it's in, and determine if there's any PMs that are due at the same time. So you look and you see, well, there's a PM due next week. Well, if I'm going to have the unit down, I might as well do the job and do the PM at the same downtime. So uh, also, if you have uh, a PM you're going to do, uh, bring up the asset and see if there's any corrective items against the same asset, while, and you can do them right after you do the PM. So both ways, um, if you're going to be taking something down, take it down once. Do one travel. Do one uh, job assignment. Do one, you know, waiting for operations to decontaminate the unit. All through, go do one thing and you'll be much more efficient. Um, second thing, what components work in your environment? What type of components? You know, what kind of uh, motors are, are the best? What kind of um, proximity switches, valves, um, controls? You know, which ones uh, do you put them in and you never see them again, like they just work uh, day in, day out? That's really, really what we were looking for. You know, I tell people that, you know, what top management wants for maintenance is less, less maintenance. And by analyzing our component life, we can find the components that are out there already that uh, we can use to uh, reduce our maintenance. So component life is, and what it tells you is the mean time between failures for that component. If you're doing your data right, you'll be able to answer that. Um, another big decision is rebuild, buy a new one, repair, you know, repair, replace decisions. Um, I was at a, a, at a company uh, earlier this week, actually Monday of this week, um, and they had some expensive pumps and, you know, somebody said that when they looked at this pump, they had bought the pump two or three times over the spare parts counter. In other words, they had put more money into the pump than the pump was worth to replace it. Um, and this is the kind of thing where with a CMMS you can ask that question and find out, you know, those assets where you're rebuilding it but you really ought to be just replacing it. Or an asset that, you know, the replacement value is significantly higher than rebuilding it, but you're replacing it because you don't know any better. So this is this is one area where you can uh, generally make a lot of money. Our standard for this is that the uh, rebuilt, refurbished unit should uh, cost less than half of a new one and give you greater than three quarters of the life of the new one. That's just a rule of thumb. Um, another area is like how much money was spent in, in a particular uh, situation. Um, you know, for, for pumps, and then which pump was the most expensive. Because uh, if we think of the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, we know that if we have 100 pumps, there's 10 or 20 of them that are causing most of our problems. And possibly by managing the small number, we could be managing the whole, the whole lot. And then finally, it's, uh, you know, where to focus, um, where to put your attention. Now, I want to describe to you a way to do this. Most of you, and I don't, I don't know the job titles of the, of the people listening, but I'm going to say that most people listening are probably uh, supervisors, engineers, managers, um, where they're not technicians actually on the floor. I could be wrong, but um, when I talk about a protocol, I'm talking about something that would be done by technicians on the floor. That means your fitters, your electricians, um, your welders, whoever is going to do this. Is the, 
protocol is designed for those people. So the first step of a protocol is design an area uh, that you want to look at and decide what data you need to look at it. Then this is the critical part. You have to build concrete reproducible steps for one of your technicians to follow to do this analysis that you're thinking about. And then you have to build a reminder system to perform the protocol or the steps periodically to see if the information is there and if there's a decision that has to be made. Now this sounds a little bit, uh, even to me it sounds a little bit uh, hard to see, but let, let's just go into it a little bit deeper. Um, I, I learned about protocols when um, I went to, the, to get an x-ray in a hospital and there's a protocol for doing an x-ray on a broken limb and it allows people without long training like the x-ray technicians to take advantage of the knowledge of the physicist who tells you how much radiation to put into the x-ray machine and the doctor who knows how to position stuff so that uh, you get the best picture. So a protocol is a set of steps designed for people without long training, like technicians, to take advantage of people that have long training, like maintenance engineers, reliability engineers, uh, supervisors and managers. <coughs> now what we need is we need some kind of actionable uh, condition. Um, so we're going to have to have something that we're going to be looking at deeply. The analysis is exactly what we're going to be saying. Like, if we're going to do component life analysis, we're going to write a query that will do the component life analysis, give us mean time between failures for a component, and we're going to um, use our our analysis to give us an answer. Um, we then have an analyst uh, who thinks through what's going to happen ahead of time, and then a senior technician um, that will actually do the analysis that's been designed by the analyst. So. Uh, the steps are specific, concrete, actionable. The steps have to be specific, concrete, and actionable so somebody can actually carry them out. Um, explicitly stepped out. Uh, preset and pre-designed so that um, the steps, whatever the person has to do, there's a button. Uh, the query is pre-designed. Um, they may have to put in limits or action points, and the analysis would be automatic. But it's only useful if it happens. So I ask people, you know, I say, um, you know, do you do root cause analysis on breakdowns? And they say yes. And I say, great, show me one. And they can't show me one. And they can't show me one because they don't do it um, formally and automatically. So it's only a useful process if it happens. And then what I recommend is to use your PM system to generate the request for running a protocol. So we might have a protocol on you know, which pump is the most expensive pump to maintain. That could be the name of our protocol. And it automatically comes out as a PM annually. So it's a PM ticket comes out. It's given to a senior technician. And the senior technician, instead of going to the machine and doing a PM, they actually go to a computer and do an analysis that's initiated by the PM. So it's uh, you know, using your PM system to remind you to keep running the protocol. These protocols will give you significant return on investment from the time and will make your uh, CMMS dramatically more valuable 
because you're starting to make decisions based on the data in them. So the right actions based on data are the, what, the way to generate return on investment from your CMMS. And generating that return on investment is lean maintenance because you're going to be you know, getting rid of components that don't, don't really serve you well. You're going to be um, consolidating jobs where that's possible. You're going to be getting rid of assets that are too expensive to maintain. So if you want to try this, what you do is pick an area where you see an opportunity. And let's just say, let's just pick an area. One of the greatest areas uh, for opportunities in, in the most maintenance departments are the parts which the, the use of which consumes the most money each year. Now these are specific part numbers that when you multiply the unit cost times the annual usage you get a substantial number. And what the statistics say is about 7% of these parts are actually consuming about 75% of your budget in parts each year. So a very small number of part numbers, or they call them SKUs, SKUs, are actually consuming most of your budget in parts. So given that, you might have a set up a protocol to look where these parts are used and to see if there's any way that anybody can think of to reduce the usage. This would be very, very straightforward to do, and you could do it on, you know, 10 parts a month, remembering that these are the parts that are consuming most of your money. Parts are an area where there's low-hanging fruit almost everywhere. So, you know, before I end, um, this is really where the rubber meets the road. You know, in your CRMS development process, when you put in a system, a few months down the road, your ability to deal with more technology goes up dramatically. Um, you know, where would you like to be in six months or a year? Um, where are you in the process right now? Think, thinking deeply, like, are you in the kindergarten where you, you're still trying to figure out how to get the data in? Are you a high school student where you're starting to do your good analysis? Are you college where you're you know, doing analysis and making decisions based on um, your analysis. So wh where are you and, and what are you going to do about going to the next level? What are you going to do about going to the next level? So I would like to thank you very much for your attention for this short talk.